Good morning. So I'm still on about these balls, these spheres in the area, but I was thinking more about it and you know, I don't really have a background. I'm just a nutty uh, art person who has a good sound understanding of logic maybe. But so we took a ball, a sphere, and we divided the surface into four equal pieces. Therefore, each of these sections has an area of a circle the size of this, right? Interestingly, the periphery of this area is also the periphery, the circumference, of a circle, 2 pi. Pull to pull pi, pull to pull pi. Whether you flatten it out, see, this, that is this. Or you squish it up. See, if it was flat, it's like that. You fold it 90 degrees. And you still have the same area because it's on a sphere. Right, which is interesting. And then I was thinking more about this and I was like, wait, but it would be so easy to just put like a, like make this a zigzag line and then the line would be way longer. And is it only if it's straight lines? Well, what exactly is a straight line? A straight line, is, is it straight between what length of points? So I was thinking more about this and I came to the conclusion that the rule must be or seems to be as long as all the angles are 90 degrees or more obtuse than 90 degrees, flat, which is quite obtuse. I was making a joke first graph that like, you know, you don't want to hang out with straight lines because they're so obtuse. And you want to hang out with pointed things because they're very cute and they'll have a lot of insight. Uh, so yeah, so as long as the angles are 90 degrees or obtuse to 90 degrees, then if you draw a shape that has the periphery of a circle, 2 pi, the area contained in that zone will be also the area of a circle. Here's the Gombaki version where each of these, each of these sections, where did I mark it, is two thirds of pi. And it goes from there, but it stops. It's missing that third, which is a third of this is two thirds, two thirds, two thirds. We're actually just sort of like using a compass point and going over there along the surface. So this is the form of a equal diameter. Those funny shapes. And again, each of these angles is more than 90 degrees, 120 degrees in fact. And that is two-thirds of pi, two-thirds, 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 six-thirds, two pi. So that is also the periphery of the circle that it would be if we flattened it out. I just find, I'm not saying there's anything to this, I just found it an interesting rule of how to make, how to divide the surface of a sphere into its four component flat circles. This is the tetrahedral version. This, I don't know what this would be. This is, you could easily turn this into an octagon actually, don't you think? Just seeing it there and it's like triangle, 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 triangle. So that would be like octagonal, octagonal facing. This is a tetrahedral facing. So, there we go. Anyways, just rambling, but I just, I found it interesting exploring like, how do you fit those four equal circles? Because in a way, each of these is a circle. They're like angular circles. The circles that I squished, but because I applied them to a sphere, they retain the area that they had before they were squished as circles. I just found that interesting. Anyways, peace.